Hi, and welcome to our video 1.3 atoms. Now we're actually going to get started looking at the structure of atoms. So the definition of an atom is the smallest part of a substance that can take part in a chemical reaction. Very important, we have to know the three subatomic particles. And they are the proton, the neutron, and the electron. And if we look at the picture here, we can see both the proton and the neutrons are in the nucleus. So they'll be referred to as nucleons sometimes. So they're both in the nucleus, and the electrons move around the nucleus. <coughs> so now we're going to take a look at the nucleus. The central part of the atom, right, if you remember from Rutherford's gold foil experiment, he said that there's a... Uh, the atom consists of a small, dense, positively charged nucleus, contains protons and neutrons. The nucleus is positively charged. Why is the nucleus positively charged? Because protons are positively charged. And the neutrons are neutral. No charge, zero charge. And so this is important. When, in class a lot, I'll draw models of atoms on the board for you. And either I'll just draw a circle with a plus to represent the nucleus, or I'll actually draw out some protons and neutrons. If I do so, the protons will be little circles with a plus. Neutrons will be just a plain little circle. So a proton will be a circle with a plus. A neutron will be just a circle, kind of like a zero. OK? So protons positive, neutrons neutral. No charge, zero charge. Neutron, neutral. Okay, so usually I'll say neutrons are neutral. The nucleus is pretty much all the, atom the atom's mass. Okay, we say it's nearly all or practically all, but in reality, for all intents and purposes, it's all the atom's mass. Electrons are so tiny, they don't really account for any of the mass at all. However, the nucleus is tiny compared to the atom as a whole. Now remember from the Rutherford gold foil experiment, right, if here's the atom as a whole, and that's from the center to the outside of the electron cloud, the nucleus is really tiny part in just the center. Now the electrons are small, but they're moving around constantly in this space, but it's mostly space. So if we consider the atom from as the size of the outer part of the electron cloud, the nucleus is this teeny tiny little part in the middle. So while it has almost all the mass, it's tiny compared to the atom as a whole. All right, electrons. Electrons move around the nucleus. They are negatively charged. <coughs> They're tiny. The size of the shells, like I drew on the, on the previous slide, the size of the shells determine the size of the atom. The electrons have very little mass. This means approximately equal to zero. Now, this is the new thing we have to know. The outermost shell of electrons are called valence electrons. So when we draw the atom, right, if here's the nucleus in the center, and there's electrons in shells, remember I said we're going to draw them like the Bohr planetary model, although let's imagine I can actually draw it and that that's a circle. The outermost shell and the electrons in this outside shell here are referred to as valence electrons. Got to know the term. And it's these valence electrons, these outer electrons, <coughs> that take part in chemical reactions. So when there's electrons inside, these here inner electrons do not take part in chemical reactions. Only the outer ones do. <clears throat> now, in a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Okay, Because atoms by themselves are neutral. They have no net charge. So since electrons and protons are equal and opposite in charge, they have to have the same number of each. So in order to be neutral, right, let's say I have four protons. 
Right here I have four pluses. So I need how many minuses to balance these out and equal zero? One, two, three, four. They're equal. And then my net charge is zero. Now, if you add an electron or remove an electron, you're going to get something with a charge called an ion. Okay, so an ion has a charge. So going back to my example here, let's say I add an electron to here. Well, I have four pluses and now five minuses. So instead of being neutral, I have negative one. So when I add an electron, my charge becomes more negative. So when electrons are added, you get a negative ion. And that's called an anion. Here's how I remember it. A-N. A negative ion. Okay, add electrons, get a negative ion. Now let's say I go back to our model here, and instead of adding that electron, I take one away. Well, when electrons are removed, you get a cation, which is positive. So right here I have four pluses, three minuses, so I have a net positive charge. The way to remember a cation, C-A-T-I-O-N, a lowercase t kind of looks like a plus. Know your particles. So here's the things we have to really, really know. Atoms are neutral, no net charge. Electrons and protons are equal, but opposite in charge. Electrons have a charge of minus 1. Protons have a charge of plus 1. If we add or remove electrons, we get an ion. Add an electron, an anion, negative. Remove electrons, a cation, positive. So here's a table that you need to copy down to rememberize. So the electron will be re written frequently as an E minus, or be drawn a circle with a minus in the middle, and has a charge of negative one. The mass in AMU that stands for atomic mass unit. More on that later. Is one over one eight three six. So it's so tiny that we say it's pretty much zero, no mass. Proton, P with a plus, but usually you'll see it drawn like that, a circle with a plus in the middle. As a charge of plus one, right, so where the electron was minus one, this is plus one, and it has a mass of one AMU. Neutron, be usually just drawn as a circle, but you can see it as N with a zero like this. Has no charge, it's neutral. Same mass as the proton, 1 AMU. All right, question time. So these, very simple from the notes you just took, very easy to answer. As well as, see if you can do this from memory without your notes, but if you have to cheat and go back and use your notes, I'll understand. But you need to be able to fill out this table. Could always be a pop quiz. All right, that brings us to the end of 1.3, and I'll see you guys in school.